Let's open up our Bibles, please, to the seventh chapter of the book of Hebrews this morning for our study. Hebrews, the seventh chapter for our study. Game shows. The article said that the greatest game show of all time is Jeopardy. And as you went down the list and they put a numerical ranking with regard to all the game shows, number six on the list was a show called What's My Line? It's had several different versions over the decades. The premise is very, very simple. You had a group of celebrities, a panelist, and you had a contestant. And the panelist had to guess the occupation of the contestant. They could only ask questions that could be answered with a yes or a no. And if they got 10 no's, well, that would mean that the panelists had been stumped by the contestants. It's an interesting show. And the highlight of the show each week was the mystery guest. The panelists would all put on these blindfolds and the mystery guest would come in. They would sign on the board their name and then take their seat. And usually they'd have to disguise their voice because they were recognizable if they would be seen. It was the same rules. They would do the questions, and if there were 10 no's, then the mystery guest would be the one that would have stumped them. As we study today, we have a mystery guest, a mystery man, Melchizedek. Just, just who is this guy? Who is this mystery man? Melchizedek. The mystery starts a long way back, all the way back into the 14th chapter of Genesis. So if you'd keep your finger in Hebrews, the seventh chapter, because we're going to return there. But let's start in Genesis, the 14th chapter, because that's where the mystery starts. Just a little backdrop. This section of scripture talks about a man by the name of Abram. God would later change his name to Abraham. But here in the story, he's still Abram. Abram had a nephew by the name of Lot who lived in Sodom. There was a conflict and Lot was taken captive. Abram then went to rescue his nephew. When the rescue was complete, Abram came with the people and the possessions and brought them to the king of Sodom. But when that exchange was going to occur, there was also another king present. King Melchizedek. King Melchizedek. Picking up in Genesis, the 14th chapter, verse 18, we read this. And King Melchizedek of Salem brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God Most High. He blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram by God Most High, maker of heaven and earth. And blessed be God Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your hands. Here's the thing. This section is the last that we hear of Melchizedek in the entire Old Testament. There's only one other reference in the Old Testament to Melchizedek, and that's in Psalm 110. But this little exchange where there's King Melchizedek with King Sodom and Abram, this little exchange is the only reference outside of the quick little glance on his name in Psalm 110, it's the only reference in the entire Old Testament. So just who is he anyway? Who is this man of mystery? Well, let's go to Hebrews, the seventh chapter. Hebrews, the seventh chapter, 
verse 1. We read this. This king Melchizedek of Salem, priest of the Most High God, met Abraham as he was returning from defeating the kings and blessed him. So just exactly what we read in Genesis, the 14th chapter. And to Abraham apportioned one-tenth of everything. His name, in the first place, means king of righteousness. Next, he's also king of Salem, that is, king of peace. Then verse 3. Without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but resembling the Son of God, he remains a priest forever. That almost sounds like a riddle, doesn't it? Verse 3 again. Without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but resembling the Son of God, he remains a priest forever. Man of mystery, indeed. Let's get a little backdrop to this now. Jacob, in the Bible, had 12 boys. These 12 boys became the ancestors of the 12 tribes of Israel. Notice where it says, he remained a priest forever. Well, in ancient day, all of the priests came out of the tribe of Levi, one of Jacob's sons. So if you were a priest, you came out of the tribe of Levi. What did the priests do? They offered sacrifices. Day after day after day after day. Animal sacrifices. In Hebrews, the 10th chapter, it says this, And every priest stands day after day at his service, offering again and again the same sacrifices that can never take away sins. So in the morning and the evening, these priests would be offering the sacrifices, these priests from the tribe of Levi. But the thing is, is those sacrifices could never ever take away the sins. It could never bring about the forgiveness of sins. So, so what did the sacrifices do then? The sacrifices made the people clean on the outside, made them ceremonially clean, but they could never ever take away sin. And here's also an aspect of the priesthood. It was temporary. You became a priest when you were 25, and at 50, you were done being a priest. So 25 years, start at 25, and at 50, you were done being a priest. It was temporary. Okay, let's go back now to verse 3. It says, without father, without mother without genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of life. And at the very end then of verse 3, it says he remains a priest forever. Well, certainly he had a father and a mother. He was a human being. But what the Bible is telling us here is there's no recorded genealogy with regard to Melchizedek. In other words, there wasn't a, this is who his father was, this is the mother here, coming out of the line of Levi, he was a priest. No, he wasn't in the line of Levi. There's no genealogy that's given. Again, it says, without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of life. In other words, 
his priesthood was not connected with his genealogy. It wasn't that, well, here's his genealogical line. He comes out of the tribe of Levi. Therefore, you see, he is a priest. No, his priesthood was not connected to his genealogy. So he wasn't temporary. He was a priest forever. Okay, so he's the king. He's a priest, doesn't come from the Levitical line, and his priesthood is forever. Man of mystery, indeed. Well, let's keep digging. Let's go, please, to Numbers chapter 21. The book of Numbers in the Old Testament. Numbers chapter 21. And we're going to pick up in verse 5 of Numbers 21. There the scripture says this. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So, Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So, Moses made a serpent of bronze, put it on a pole, and whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. Jesus takes this imagery, this imagery from this story, and he refers to it in John, the third chapter. Jesus says this, And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. He takes that image in the Old Testament and he uses that image and he applies it to himself. This is what is called a type. A type. A type is a, a person, it's a practice, or it's a ceremony that we see in the Old Testament that has a counterpoint in the New Testament. So just as that story about the serpent on the pole and looking and the people then were spared, so also Jesus lifted up on the cross and all who look unto him, all who believe in him, have eternal life. You see, the story in the Old Testament was a type. A type looks ahead. It points ahead to something that will come. Another example is the sacrificial lambs. All the lambs that were sacrificed in the Old Testament. Well, those sacrificial lambs were a type, a type of the Lamb of God who would come and bear the sin of the world. Could it be that this man of mystery this Melchizedek? Could it be that he's a type? That he's a type? The very last show of the original version of What's My Line? 
the very last show they came to the mystery guest time. The host then said, now we'll have the mystery guests, so please put on your blindfolds. And all the panelists put on their blindfolds. Then the host said, mystery guest, please sign in. Right after he said that, he quickly got up, he went behind the curtain, came out the other side of the curtain, and signed his own name in, and then went to sit down as the mystery guest. He, of course, was disguising his voice. The panelists started to ask the questions. And there were several questions. But the panel, the panel wasn't stumped. Because before they reached the limit of the 10 no answers, one of the panelists said, Are you the host of What's My Line? He had been figured out. All of the questions, all of the clues, it had become obvious. Keep asking the questions. Keep following the clues. And it becomes obvious with who our mystery man is. Let's go back now to Hebrews, the seventh chapter. So we know he was a king. We know he was a priest. Look at the second part of verse 2. His name in the first place means king of righteousness. Next, he is also king of Salem that is, king of peace. So he's a king. He's a priest. His name means righteousness. His name means peace. Then into that verse 3, without faith, without, without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of life. So his priesthood was not linked to his genealogy. And then the very last part of verse 3. But resembling the Son of God, he remains a priest forever. Jesus is the King of kings and Lord of Lords. Jesus is the priest. But this priest, Jesus, doesn't offer the animal sacrifice. This priest, Jesus, offers himself on the cross, shedding his own blood for our sin, winning for us forgiveness. This Jesus is righteous. Luther talked about the great exchange where Jesus takes our sin upon himself and gives to us of his perfect life, his righteous garment. Jesus is peace because of the sacrifice on the cross because the sacrifice has been accepted because his tomb is empty and Jesus lives and reigns we have peace with God sin had separated us from God Almighty this gulf had happened because of our sin and Jesus comes God in the flesh to deal with that broken relationship, reconciling us unto God. And his priesthood is not linked to his genealogy. Because Jesus didn't come out of the tribe of Levi. 
Jesus came out of the tribe of Judah. The scripture tells us in verse 24, it says, he holds, speaking of Jesus, his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able for all time to save those who approach God through him since he always lives to make intercession for them. Who is this Melchizedek? He's a type that pointed ahead to Jesus Christ. Melchizedek, man of mystery. Well, no, he was a type, a type pointing to Jesus. And when it comes to Jesus, there's just no mystery. There's just no mystery about how much he loves you.